you ever had to learn a lesson the hard way? Well, if you have, we should talk more about that. Well, hello friends, I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. Five years ago, I reached out to my dad and asked, hey, do you happen to have a video camera? And of course, because he always seemed to have everything that we needed whenever we needed it, he did. He had this little GoPro, I don't, I think it was a five maybe. This was very rudimentary GoPros but it was more than I had at the time. So I grabbed the camera, I escaped up into my master bedroom closet, and I started filming our journey into family minimalism. And I didn't know it at the time, but things were going to change dramatically. Just before that time though, I was having a bit of a crisis, albeit more of an internal crisis. And the root of that crisis was something that I never ever anticipated would be a problem for me. So if we go even further back in the Wayback Machine, my husband Brian and I got married in 2007 and by 2008, we were ready to start trying to have a family, which of course did not go as we planned. Fast forward to 2014, we decided that it just was not going to happen despite trying pretty much everything but surrogacy that we needed to pursue adoption. And not just that we needed to do this, but that we really felt like God was calling us to do that. So we took a complete nose dive off of the high dive into parenting when we adopted our three boys in 2016. And this is probably where I'm gonna fall apart. So to say that those were challenging times was an understatement. We had three boys, they were all under the age of four, but developmentally, everyone was between nine and 18 months. Our youngest son was 14 months. He was pretty typically developing. Although he had no teeth and was not yet walking, he quickly caught up both with teeth <laughs> through a lot of months of no sleep and teething and oh, it was just, those were hard times for him and for me. But our older two boys had significant challenges to overcome. They were both completely nonverbal. Our, I won't say completely, our middle son had about 20 intelligible words. That's not even words that were actually correct, but just that we could make out in his speech. And our oldest son had maybe six. No one was potty trained. Nobody even knew how to use a fork. And it was unclear at that point what the future was going to hold for our family. But for me, this is really where the disconnect between my expectations and reality started to sink in. And you may be asking, what does this have to do with family minimalism? Bear with me because I think you'll see as we continue on in this story, how all of these pieces work together and how God used all of these things to really change not just my life, but our entire family. So within the first year, we were already feeling the stress of having too much stuff. I talked a little bit about this on a podcast that my friend Carrie and I do called Spilling the Tea. I'll link that below if you wanna check it out get more of the kind of behind the scenes of minimalism. But we were feeling the constraints of a 1200 square foot house with three bedrooms and two bathrooms and just a ton of stuff. So we decided at that point, our school district was pretty terrible and we needed to get into a better school district that had a much stronger special needs program and some more space would be nice. So we moved into this house about seven years ago now, and it didn't solve all the problems. We still had a lot of stuff. I still struggled to get through the day-to-day -day tasks, dishes, laundry, chasing the toys around. In fact, we had more square footage for me to clean than what I could keep up with. And although I thought this incredible blessing of a home and a family would be exactly what I wanted as an answer to prayer, it ultimately ended up feeling like more of a burden. The challenges with our children's development were overwhelming. 
We had stuff everywhere. I was doing everything that I thought I should be doing as a mom. I was getting matching outfits. I was making sure that we had beautiful decorations to make everything feel special around the holidays for our kids. We weren't living an extravagant lifestyle by any stretch of the imagination, and we actually weren't living outside of our means. We just had so much stuff. But deep in the pit of my stomach, I was so unbelievably unhappy. Motherhood was not at all what I wanted it to be. It didn't look like I thought it would. I felt depressed. I felt anxious. I felt like they would have been better off without me as a mother. Here we had taken all of these steps to try and give these children a much better life than they had. And I felt like I was failing them. There was tension in my marriage as my husband and I tried to navigate household chores and never ending laundry and work schedules that competed with one another, long commutes, and just never feeling like we had enough hours in the day. I was frustrated with all the things that we had that were supposed to make life more convenient, but they just didn't. And so I did what every good Zenial does. I went to Pinterest and YouTube to try and find a solution. I thought that laundry was my problem. I thought I had too much laundry to do, but it was not because I had too many clothes. It was because I didn't have a good enough system to actually get through the laundry. Maybe I needed more hampers. Maybe I needed more laundry baskets. And when I asked friends and family, how do you do this? Many of them said, I don't know, we can't keep up with it either. Maybe you need another set of washer and dryers. Or there seemed to be these magical unicorns who just could fold laundry as it was coming out of the dryer and then put it away. What does that even look like? Spoiler alert, I still don't know. Then I found the minimal mom. I'm sure in some regards, my story is very similar to yours. If you too have stumbled upon this absolute gem of a human being, you probably heard her say, did you know you didn't need all of that stuff? And initially thought, no, I had no idea. I did not need all of that stuff. But then maybe you got into the trenches and you wondered if you actually did need all of this stuff. Or maybe you got rid of a lot of stuff, but it felt weird and so you brought a bunch back. I certainly had my seasons and waves of getting things out of our home. I very quickly realized though that reducing down the number of items we had in our home just was not going to be enough. It, it just wasn't gonna work. It didn't solve all the problems. The same way that adopting children did not solve the issues of infertility in my heart. There was no shortage of YouTube videos on how to be a better minimalist. There was also no shortage of YouTube videos on how to be a better Christian, which honestly amounted to studying your Bible more and praying more and things would just magically get better. The problem was none of that helped with my laundry. There was no amount of reading my Bible that helped me get the laundry put away. There was no amount of prayer that magically cleaned the toys up. So God used two things in my life during that time to help me better understand what this introduction into minimalism was all about. The first was a study in Leviticus. Our Sunday school class was talking about the offerings and how the Israelites' lives revolved around this perpetual service in making atonement for sin. Everything that they had was measured and calculated around making themselves right with God. The other tool he used was a book called The Envy of Eve by Melissa Kruger that talked about coveting, a problem I did not believe I had. I did not lust after other people's husbands. I didn't want as much money as I possibly could, and I certainly did not want my neighbor's donkey. I felt in that regard that I didn't really have anything to worry about. The combination of all of these things really led me to realize that 
Our family's journey into minimalism was so much deeper than just the stuff. I needed to learn an entirely different perspective on things like idolatry and coveting and why I kept the things that I kept. And thankfully, because of all of my dad's American Express points, I was able to document a lot of that journey here on YouTube. So around 2019, 2020, and even into 2021 a little bit, we purged 85% of the belongings in our home. And you'll hear that pretty frequently if you spend enough time in the minimalism <laughs> section of YouTube. People throw out those numbers like, we decluttered 90% of our belongings, but you have to wonder, how did you actually figure that out? Well, I started treating our journey into minimalism a little like a math problem. I calculated out the square footage that we had. I looked at the square footage of the storage units that we had, and I really thought about how much of our space was covered in stuff. And it's not junk. You know, we weren't hoarders who had piles and piles and piles of stuff and newspapers everywhere. It, it really wasn't about that. It was all of the extra clothes, the extra toys, the serving wear, the china, the sentimental items, all of the things that most people have in their homes, we had. We just had way too much of it. And things were pretty good for a while, even despite all of the crazy pandemonium that happened in 2020 and let's be fair into 2021, we were thriving as minimalists. My faith was increasing by leaps and bounds. I had never felt so connected to the Lord. And then something happened. In September of 2021, my dad passed away very unexpectedly, very rapidly, and very traumatically. It was a horrible experience. It was one of the absolute worst experiences of my life. But it was also an experience where I began to feel the peace that passes understanding. I began to feel God's love and care for me and our family in a way that I had never felt that before. And after a series of unfortunate Wednesday events that seemed to plague us for months and months and months after that, my father-in-law passed away. And again, it felt like our world just kind of got shaken up and spilled out all over the place. And to be honest, minimalism, a YouTube channel, just did not feel as important anymore. I love the community here. I love reading all of your comments and I really love responding to most of them. I love that I get to have this conversation with you that is really unique and different than a lot of the things we see on social media. But it's been a struggle to get videos out every week, sometimes even once a month. And don't worry, this isn't one of those, so I'm closing the channel videos, we're not doing that. We're gonna keep going. It just may look a little different than it has in the past. I love talking about decluttering. I love talking about minimalism, but what I love talking about more than anything is God. I love helping you connect the very practical elements of your everyday life with biblical concepts. I want to see you make connections in what you read in Leviticus to all of that stuff that's hanging out in your hall closet. I wanna encourage you to have quiet time. I wanna show you how to do that. And I want to keep being a voice in a place where there aren't always a lot of practical everyday tips on how to live out your Christian faith. So what have I learned five years later now here on this side of family minimalism? Well, I've learned that I can live with a lot less than what I had. I have learned that friends can be found in very unexpected places. I've learned that my capacity to give is far greater than I ever thought that it was. I have learned that motherhood in all of its challenges 
And even if it is unbelievably different than I ever thought that it would be, is one of the greatest joys of my life. But the greatest lesson that I have learned through all of this, whether it was a hard lesson or an easy lesson, is that God is sovereign over every single aspect of our lives. And he can use a lot of ways to reveal himself and his word to us. And we really can live out our faith day by day in even the most mundane of places like pulling clothes out of the dryer. And if you're still watching at this point, I hope you subscribe and want to continue on this journey with me. I don't know what it's going to look like. I really don't. I am hoping to get on a better schedule with posting. I am working on some other projects that you are going to see popping in and out of here every now and then. But more than anything, I just want to keep helping us connect simple living and deep faith. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.